I flew on one of the last Dash 7s in the world. This 4-engine turboprop was built by Canadian aircraft manufacturer de Havilland Canada and is the predecessor to the more well-known Dash 8. Unlike the Dash 8, though, the Dash 7s were designed as short takeoff and landing, or STOL, airliners. In the late 1960s, as the regional airliner market grew considerably, de Havilland Canada saw potential for a 50-seat airliner of their own, drawing on their decades of experience producing rugged, stole aircraft like the Beaver and Twin Otter. First flying in 1975, the Dash 7 quickly found its niche flying into challenging airports with short runways, paved or otherwise. Though the Dash 7 was an effective 50-seat airliner for its time, the later Dash 8 was both faster and more economical to operate, which has since led to over a thousand of those being built. In the end, 113 Dash 7s rolled off the production line at Downsview Airport in Toronto, with the last one being delivered in 1988. These days, only a handful of Dash 7s are left flying, with two in Kenya, one with Transport Canada, one with the British Antarctic Survey, and a couple with the US Army. In Canada's Northwest Territories, however, in the city of Yellowknife, is the world's largest civilian Dash 7 operator, Air Tindy. Founded in 1988, Air Tindy has since grown to become one of the largest air operators in the Northwest Territories, serving six communities from Yellowknife with scheduled passenger service, as well as operating air ambulance, cargo, and charter flights. Today, they're the proud owner of 10 Dash 7s on the Canadian Aircraft Register, five of which are currently in active service. Yellowknife Airport is Air Tindy's main base of operations, which spans four different hangars. Their southernmost hangar is also where their terminal is for their scheduled flights, which has this very nice looking check-in and a waiting area with plenty of seats for the number of passengers they fly. Now, the reason I say all of this is because back in July last year, under invitation from Air Tindy, I had the chance to fly on one of the last semi-scheduled Dash 7 routes in the Western Hemisphere. This would be a quick hop across Great Slave Lake to the community of Hay River, and then back to Yellowknife. One important thing to clarify though, is that this route isn't consistently flown with Dash 7, and it's usually operated by a Twin Otter instead. The Dash 7 does occasionally make an appearance on some of their other scheduled routes, but it all depends on the demand for passengers and cargo on a particular day, so today's flight was an incredible opportunity. Sitting just outside their passenger terminal was the Dash 7 flying us today, a 45-year-old Dash 7103, registered as Charlie Foxtrot Papa Bravo Juliet. PBJ started out in 1978 with Emirates Air Services, then flew with Air Greenland from 1994 until 2011. Canadian operator TransCapital Air then took it on, flying for the United Nations on peacekeeping flights, until it was sold to Air Tindy in 2021. That very purchase just three years ago is an interesting one. In January 2021, Air Tindy more than doubled the number of Dash 7s under its ownership when they announced that they had purchased seven Dash 7 airframes from TransCapital Air. Most of those airframes would be used for parts, but two of them joined the flying fleet. For an airline of Air Tindy's size, a purchase like that was an almost unprecedented move, but one that assured that the Dash 7 would fly with them for a long time to come. Now, one other airplane that came from TransCapital Air has a very exciting project ahead of it. Charlie Foxtrot Juliet Hotel Quebec, or GHQ, will be the focus of a three-year partnership between Air Tindy, NASA, engineering firm Aerotech, and electric propulsion specialist Magna X. Over the course of the next couple of years, GHQ will be converted into a hybrid testbed aircraft, with two of its Pratt & Whitney PT-6s being swapped out for electric propulsion units. This is all part of NASA's Electrified Powertrain Flight Demonstration Project, or EPFD. This will test new electric aircraft propulsion technologies in the hopes of introducing them into commercial service in the next decade or so. The Dash 7 is a great platform for this sort of testing too, since there's less risk with four engines, not to mention the type's already impressive short takeoff and landing capabilities. GHQ has since flown down to Moses Lake, Washington, and is no longer on the Canadian register, but Air Tindy will still have an active role maintaining the aircraft and providing input from an operational perspective. While, again, this will be a test bed only, when you think about the longevity of the Dash 7, a project like this is very exciting. Going back to today's Dash 7 though, Air Tindy's current operating ones all have a large cargo door at the front. One Dash 7 is used as a cargo aircraft only, while the other four are combis and can carry a varying number of passengers and cargo. This one had just arrived after completing some charters, with 26 seats and two pallets of cargo at the front. For the Hay River run though, they'd be flying in the full passenger configuration, which meant putting another 20 seats in. I had the absolute treat of watching that whole process, and got some great close-up views of the plane in the meantime. 
What's even more interesting about this particular plane is that at serial number 9, PBJ is also the oldest Dash 7 still flying in the world. That just makes this whole thing all the more special, knowing that there are maybe a dozen or so flying in the world today, and such a large percentage of those are right here in the Northwest Territories. Besides, there aren't many four-engine turboprops that are still flying passengers today. I wonder if the Dash 7 might actually be the last of those too. In just 20 minutes though, the cabin reconfiguration was finished, with our Dash 7 now sporting the full passenger 46 seat layout. All that was left to do was close the cargo door on those seats, as one does, and get ready to hop on board. Airtindy has open seating on all of their scheduled flights, and I got myself a seat in the bulkhead row in 2A, right next to the cargo door. This row has some fantastic legroom, and an even better view looking up at two propellers. That's just not something you get to see very often. Each seatbelt also has an engraved Dash 7 logo too. I would like to welcome you on board Airtindy's to Havilland Dash 7 flight departing shortly. For your own safety, as well as the safety of your fellow passengers, Boarding finished up pretty quickly, and the four Pratt & Whitney PT6s were soon started up. Here's our departure from Yellowknife off runway 28. Yellowknife to Hay River is about a 45 minute flight with a slight headwind, essentially flying straight from the northern shore of Great Slave Lake to the southern one. Unfortunately, there was not a lot to see with all of the forest fire smoke in the area at the time, but that didn't stop me from thoroughly enjoying the sound of those four turboprops. There's just so much to love about a special plane like this, and the fact that it's operating as a normal passenger flight is even better. In the meantime, our fantastic cabin crew member handed out these special Air Tindy branded water bottles to everyone. That is such a cool touch. Later on, they also offered some Cheez-Its or Oreos to everyone too. Again, a great touch on what is realistically a pretty short flight. One interesting thing I noticed is that this bulkhead row seems to technically be the second row. Much like some Dash 8 300s from around this time, it turns out row 1 would have actually been facing backwards. There are a couple other quirks about the Dash 7's cabin. If you think the overhead bins on the Dash 8's are small, well, it's clear the Dash 7's were designed for a different era. 
Halfway down the cabin where the wings bar is, you'll also notice that the floor dips right below that section of lowered ceiling. That dip is even more noticeable when all the seats are out too. Now, I've posted quite a few Dash 7 videos on this channel over the years, and you may remember that in 2019, I flew on another Airtindi Dash 7 on a special charter flight from Vancouver to Abbotsford. That one though was on Airtindi's passenger only Dash 7, which has since been retired. There was also the time in 2022 that Airtindi generously extended an invitation to come along on a charter flight to Downsview Airport, but I was out of the country, so had to outsource myself instead. Happily, I was very much present this time around. We eventually reached our top of descent, but before that, each passenger got one last treat from the crew in the form of a mint. Great Slave Lake got slightly more visible through the smoke as we made our way down towards Hay River. Before we departed though, our captain very graciously mounted my GoPro onto one of the windows in the flight deck. The takeoff footage didn't quite turn out, but this landing shot sure did. Here's the arrival into Hay River, landing straight in on runway 14. Hay River is one of the largest towns in the Northwest Territories, with a population of just over 3,100. Air Tindy flies here from Yellowknife twice daily on weekdays, with one flight on Sundays. After getting a couple photos of our plane here, I headed into the terminal to take a brief look around. Hay River's airport was built during the Second World War, and was later named in honor of bush pilot Merlin Carter in 2011. As you would expect, it's a pretty modest terminal, and serves the five or so daily flights that the airport gets, most of which are flights to Yellowknife. Just outside the terminal across the parking lot though, were a couple of Douglas DC-4s that caught my eye. We didn't have a ton of time here since it was a quick turnaround, so I sprinted over and got a few shots of these vintage planes. After running back to the terminal, and literally eight minutes after getting off, I was already back in line for boarding back to Yellowknife. What I gained in running across the airport, however, I lost in seat choice, so I grabbed the last window seat in row 11 and settled in. I would like to welcome you on board Air Tindy's to have a Dash 7 flight departing. I was one of the last few to hop back on, so another quick safety briefing later, those PT6s were started up again and we said goodbye to Hay River. Here's the departure back to Yellowknife off of runway 32.
After that beautiful view of Great Slave Lake's southern shore, here's a better look at the Dash 7's standard seats. These look pretty similar to those on most classic Dash 8s, and have a typical tray table and a seat back pocket with lots inside. There you'll find the safety card for the Dash 7, an air sickness bag, and two northern magazines, which had plenty of interesting articles. It's worth noting that Air Tindy also puts newspapers in these seats too. This flight was a bit shorter, and quite a bit fuller too, so there wasn't a service this time, but we were still given some more Air Tindy water bottles. After that though, I kinda just took this all in, sitting on one of the rarest airplanes in the world, on an actual passenger flight in the Western Hemisphere, I'm very grateful to Air Tindy for letting me come along today. That said, it is possible to book this flight for a not overly expensive amount. The big thing is, there's no guarantee a Dash 7 will actually be operating the flight. When it does fly to Hay River though, a round trip fare can be in the range of $340 to $450, depending on how early you book. I'd argue that's worth it for some of the last 4 engine passenger turboprops in the world. There's just so much to like about the Dash 7, from the sheer rarity of it, to its unbeatable performance and capabilities. There's also the Canadian element to it, and it couldn't be more fitting that a plane designed half a century ago is still doing what it does best in the country it was built in. In today's world, where commercial aircraft are all very similar, the Dash 7 is one of those few types still flying that harkens back to a arguably more interesting era of aviation. The good news though is that Air Tindy is well aware of just how special these planes are, and they'll still be flying in this corner of the world for a while yet. It's pretty clear to me that few things go together as well as the Northwest Territories and the Dash 7. Huge thank you to Air Tindy for this great day with their Dash 7, and thank you for watching.